Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Kazurski from Inspire Me ASAP. And in today's video, I want to share with you how to use Seesaw for distance learning. This is part of my Distance Learning Made Easy How to Teach Reading Remotely series, and this is the second video in my series. I'm going to begin by opening up Google Chrome and going to my Seesaw account. Once I'm logged into my Seesaw account, I'm then going to click on the green plus add button and scroll down to where I see assign activity. Now this is the assigned activity that I already gave to my students, but I'm going to show you how I did that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click on where it said create new activity. And I'm going to title this reading passage level E, which of course you can label it whatever you want. I'm going to come back here to add instructions, but for right now, I want to upload the PDF that I have saved to my computer. So I have it saved on my desktop, which is why I'm going to hit the upload button right here. I can simply drag and drop that PDF right into this spot on Seesaw. It's going to automatically upload that four page PDF that I want my students to see. So there's the cover page, color, the cover page in black and white, the actual reading passage, and then the comprehension questions. And this is exactly what my students would see. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to add a text box. I'm going to come over here and click on, for example, type here, click enter, and then click and drag where I want to have my students type in their response. So let me try another one. I want my students to type here, enter, click and drag, and so on. Let's say that I want to add instructions for my students. I can come here to the little microphone and I can click on the click on the button where it will record what the instructions that I want to tell my students are. So here's what that would look like. Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Kazurski. Today I want you to read the Sandcastle reading passage and then I want you to answer the reading comprehension questions on the next page. If you have any questions or if you need any help, don't forget to message me. Okay, so I just, for the purpose of the video for you, I just left really brief a really brief message for my students and I'm gonna come and click on the button up here in the right hand corner that says done. And you could see right here that the students will be able to hit the button where it says play video and they'll be able to read the or listen to the instructions. I can re-record if I made mistake by clicking right here. Now that I have all that I want added I don't need to add any page right here. I don't need to add an image or anything else. I'm going to click on the green button on the upper right hand side. And now I'm going to just type in the directions right here so that the students can visually see the directions in addition to listen to the directions that I told them. So I'm just going to be real brief right here, boys and girls. Please read the passage, or I'll just say story, and answer the questions. Now, one of the questions on the comprehension page require the students to draw, which they love to do digitally, um, draw their response. So I'm going to click right here where it says drawing. And this is where the students can come and draw what their, what their response would be for that question number five. I'm going to click on save. And then you can see right here that it is ready to assign to my students. 
I can come click on the folder assigned to one class, but I actually like to schedule it. And I like to schedule it because I like to batch my lessons for my students. For example, I like to batch all of my reading, um, all of the assignments that I'm doing with my reading groups or even with my whole groups. I like to batch that out and then move on to my math, so your, my Eureka math lessons and so on. So I like to, um, for example, just not assign immediately, but click on assigned on the specific, um, specific date and time and then click on it from there. I'm going to X out for the purpose of this lesson that I'm or this video that I'm sharing with you because I'm not actually assigning it to my students. Okay, so the next thing that I want to share with you, and I'm going to go again to assign activity, is I want to share with you how you can use a video that you might have pre-recorded on a YouTube channel or even possibly one of my videos that I have and you can share that with your students. So let me click on, for example, right here, um, real, add multimedia instruction or example, and now I'm going to click on link. So it says here to paste or enter the, U, the website URL. Well, I have a whole bunch of videos that I have created that is um, perfect for mini lessons via Seesaw. So I'm going to click on share. I'm going to copy this link and then I'm going to come right here, edit, paste, enter. And there it is right there. Now, this is something that I actually recorded for um, you guys, um, but I could easily edit this and revise this video and share it with my students as an actual mini lesson. And in this video, the lesson was all about what is the author's message? What does the author want you to know? And I did a read aloud of that book. I used the anchor chart to give specific examples. And then I had my students read their, after the video was done, I told them to get a book either on Get Epic they could read digitally or a book that they had at home on their bookshelf and they had to identify what the author's message was of the book that they were reading. So let's just say that that is the video that I want my students to watch. It is a pre-recorded video of me teaching the lesson. I may put up here um, author's message as the title and then I could again add those voice instructions or I could just type them out. Readers first watch the mini lesson on my video. Then, and this is also stated in the actual video that I have posted, but I'm going to also put the instructions right here as well. When you are done, identify the author's purpose of the book you are reading. Save. And that's where I can come again to assign it schedule it out because that's what I like to do and then it is all set for my students. If you are looking for ideas for how I um, pre-recorded lessons for my students, you can come here to my YouTube channel and you can see how I have a bunch of different lessons, a bunch of different mini lessons that you can get an idea of how you can do that for your own students. So for example, like if I just click on this one right here. Video, I want um, using sticky notes to share what we're thinking as we're reading. So this is a great way for you to just get ideas of how to pre-record a um, lesson to upload to Seesaw. And the reason I also like to do that is because 
you know, not all my students are able to come on to a Zoom meeting at the same time as I'm hosting it. So I had a lot of success with pre-recording lessons and then attaching them to my um, YouTube and then attaching the YouTube link to Seesaw for my students. And then that way they could complete the work at their convenience at any time they would be able to get that done. Okay, my friends, I hope that I taught you something new today in our Distance Learning Made Easy video series. Today was specifically about using Seesaw for distance learning. And I hope that you come and join me for the next few videos that I'm going to post about teaching reading remotely, teaching a reading lesson with Zoom, and how to teach guided reading groups remotely, and then last but not least, how to use Google Forms. Again, this is Melissa from Inspire Me ASAP, and I sure hope that this was helpful for you. Take care.